once I'm starting to hit the end stage of my portrait, after I've applied color and I've sort of painted over the top and really gone in and detailed most things, I'll start to play around with the edges uh, towards the end. I'll soften up edges uh, and then I've usually sort of established all the, the sharp accents throughout painting the portrait and I'll come in with a mixer brush and usually using the same 125 and, and pick edges where I really want to soften, soften things up. And usually that happens where we don't want the focal points to be. So around the sides of the canvas. And as you can see, as we work our way into the center, there's a lot more sharp accents and sharp edges. So if we look here and we work our way in towards the center, we can kind of see this. I've, I've circled these accents here and there's a lot more of these sharp accents which are circled in red towards the center of the, the, the portrait. And then as we move outwards, the ones circled in blue are the, the soft edges and where I've, I've kind of decided that I want the eye to not be really stuck in those areas. There are some accents, uh, for instance, down here that are sharp, and that's kind of where I just wanted to just describe form so you can actually see that this leg uh, or the knee pops out here. Um, whereas if I'd soften this, it might not describe it as well. Uh, and then where the shoulder here sort of separates from the, the back of the bench. And I think it just gives it some visual interest. I don't know if I was so conscious about being like here, I want the focal, your eye to be here the whole time. I just kind of wanted your eye to maybe move around a little bit and move into the center here. Maybe be drawn sort of down this way and into the, this coffee cup here where I've also placed some of these sharp accents. Um, not so conscious, maybe subconsciously, and it's a little bit subjective about where I placed these sharp and soft edges. And yeah, I do use Mixer Brush a lot uh, to do this. And usually this 125, you know, sampling here and then softening up. And then also I'll, um, I'll grab a sort of uh, where I've already placed an accent, for instance, gives you kind of like a brush, brush stroke. So there's a, there's a strong contrast here between this sort of dark brown and the light blonde hair and I'll kind of sample between here and then I can use a little bit of this to apply some brush strokes like there's a little bit of uh, some of the bristles have caught some of the dark paint um, I think it's quite a nice effect and yeah so we'll switch let's switch off these little circles um, just for a sec uh, some some of the places where I place accents, some of the sharpest accents usually are in the facial features. So, uh, for instance, under the eyelid here uh, and uh, between the lips here, there's a lot of variation between soft and hard uh, right next to each other. So we have a big contrast uh, group together here. It's very soft and very sharp, and that kind of draws the eye in because it really emphasizes these softs, really emphasize the sharps and vice versa. Uh, so you're kind of drawn into this area even more so because we've placed those edges uh, next to each other so there's a very strong contrast. So it's a little bit like uh, value contrast or color contrast. Uh, it's also there's edge contrast. So usually yeah, under the eyelids uh, and the lips and then there's a little bit of line work going on here and that really emphasizes that that sharp edge. Uh, and this is more of a stylistic approach. I kind of like to bring back some of these lines and uh, structure. I'll kind of square off the bottom of the ear here and underneath the chin. I think it's a, a style style thing. If we look at Sargent's piece here, it's a self-portrait of his. Um, there's a few more things to discuss. Uh, for instance, this area is very soft in the shadows. There isn't much form being described. And it's a little bit like how Barg had simplified the shadow shapes to help us uh, sort of emphasize that the focal point is more on, um, what's going on? More on this side of the face here. 
and there's a little bit less description of the forms on the shadow side, but it still works because we've got we've got that silhouette is proper, the proportions are proper, but we don't really have to describe what's going on in the shadow shape so much. And he's also decided to uh, another thing that I like to do is really keep the the hair. I mean, hair is soft, so we emphasize that by keeping most of the edges on hair soft um, and uh, down towards the beard here. There's also a bit of contrast between the soft edge here. It's a bit of a value. The values are quite similar. So he's, he's kept this soft. I'll label this in blue. And then on in uh, contrast, the very sharp edge here. And this uh, value change behind uh, creates a lot of atmosphere bit behind the uh, the portrait. And it also allows him to create a silhouette. So he's got a kind of got like the the light or the dark dark on the the light area here. He's can, he can describe this profile of the face or the side of the face by having that contrast here. And then in on the opposite side, we've got the dark and then the light. Just some more examples: uh, soft hair some sharp accents up above the ear this time. Usually I place an accent down here because you've got the shadow. You've kind of got the shadow shape that goes on underneath the ear. The shape here is usually filled in. But uh, it was quite soft in the reference I was using. So we've got a little bit of a lost edge here. This is so soft that the edge is kind of gone. And then this description of the back of the ear and the top of the ear and the little, uh, this little area here describes enough to where we can lose that edge almost completely. Same thing going on with the lips here. There's a lot of contrast and edge variation, soft, uh, the, the sharp edge, almost an accent, uh, soft edge and then the sharp edge again. And then above the eyebrow, the, the strands of hair kind of blend into the skin, but then the way that the, the light is sort of coming down here, there's a lot of contrast where it hits hits the skin again below the eyebrow, and usually it creates sort of like a dark. It this creates volume in the um, the eyebrow itself because you've got the eyebrow in a way is sort of turning underneath, and it's the the hairs on the bottom of it are catching less light. So it's a little bit darker. And then you can kind of emphasize that by having that sharp edge and then hitting the skin again. I think that's a nice touch. It's similar to how, how we discuss uh, eyes having sort of this, uh, this shadow shape over the eyeball where the, the light's coming in. If we look here where the light's coming in and then the eyelid itself is creating sort of a cast shadow over the eyeball itself. This one's a little bit more uh, sort of detailed and it's more of a sort of concept illustration. There's less brush strokey sort of work done throughout the image, uh, but on the edges of the image, it's still, still got a lot of uh, soft edges and some of that brush stroke and mix of brush being used. I just wanted to show you in a sort of concept piece where I've used those soft edges and then kept most of this area in the center very sharp. Uh, there's a bit of softness going on in the material here and the fur as well and down towards this area. Just making sure that the focal point is led into the face but also the details down on the, the cloak and the buckle. And then lastly, um, since we're moving on to our own portrait very soon, it's, it's probably good to grab some references of some sketches done by artists that you like. Um, and also some paintings, uh, if you wanna play with edge, edge work towards the end, um, we can kind of reference some of the paintings that you, you guys like and 
see how they've handled their edges. And then uh, for line work, grab some sketches so we can reference those. And then you can see uh, how your your drawing compares and, and what they've used uh, in, in this drawing that I've done. I kind of like the combination again, the contrast of having s sort of similar lines like Barg has the very structural lines in, in certain areas, maybe in the hair and then in contrast, you know, around the ear. And then in contrast, you've got these, these curved shapes of the chin show a little bit more uh, of a feminine uh, shapes in, in some areas, this being quite structured around the lips, but then the soft curve off the top of the lip. Thank you.